Hello and welcome. This is the first in a series of videos about control systems engineering. My name is Frank Owen. Uh, I'm the co-founder of a company called PolyX Engineering in San Luis Obispo, California. Also a professor emeritus in mechanical engineering at California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, California. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to explain a little bit about uh, the nature of this course or these, this uh, set of videos, a series of videos. Uh, control, co uh, covers control systems engineering, but in a more practical aspect than you normally find it in uh, uh, university textbooks. To start off with, uh, I want to talk about a control system from a very uh, high level, an overview sort of. Um, <clears throat> what defines a control system is um, that you have a, a wish, a desired value <clears throat> that you feed into the control system and then uh, the control system is controlling that value on an actual device. Um, so you, you have a wish expressed as the input and then you have uh, uh, the output which is the actual value. A good uh, example of this would be a cruise control on a car. Uh, cruise control on a car, you get the car up to speed and then you, uh, you engage the cruise control and the current speed of the, cruise, of the car at that time becomes the desired value. It's sensed, uh, written in the memory in the, in the uh, uh, computer that controls the car nowadays, and uh, it uh, strives to maintain that uh, speed for the car uh, under varying conditions of load. So, uh, from uh, the um, top uh, viewpoint, uh, the uh, control loop's in, uh, input expresses a wish, and that's some of uh, the value of some variable you want to control. Uh, I say here also that this could be anything. It could be a temperature of an oven, for instance, or a kiln, for instance, uh, uh, for drawing wood or for uh, 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 baking ceramics. Uh, speed of a car, that would be a cruise control. Uh, the altitude of an airplane, uh, level in a tank, and uh, there are just countless other examples that could be mentioned. Uh, the control system's job is actually to make the desired or the, the actual value equal to the desired value and to hold it at that level under varying conditions of load. So if everything works right, the actual value uh, is equal to the desired value. Uh, there's other ways to express this also. Uh, I like to sort of bring it down to earth, I guess you'd say where uh, you have these two values, the input and the output. And uh, the input is what you want, and the output is what you got. So if everything is working right, what you've got is what you want. Uh, I've taught uh, controls in Germany also, in Munich and in Karlsruhe. Uh, the Germans have a very nice way of expressing this uh, concept. They call the input value the Soldet, or the should value. And then the output value is called the istvert, which is the is value. Um, so now uh, let's get further into the anatomy. That was just a, a general uh, overview of what how a control system is structured. So here, what I've shown is I've shown the input and the output, and we want to look at and see what's inside the a control loop and why it's called a control loop, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, we have the desired value, of course, and the actual value. So uh, one thing that you have to do is you have to sense the actual value to make this work. So you have a sensor. It could be a temperature sensor in a temperature control system or a, a speed sensor in a cruise control on a car, for example. And you sense that. Um, you have a device, a sensor. Usually it produces as an output a voltage that's read by a computer nowadays. But it's fed back, and this is actually called the feedback uh, path of the controller, this, this part that starts with the actual value and uh, feeds the, the sense signal back to, uh, well, we'll talk about this in just a second, where it goes to. Uh, we are uh, sensing a value of a thing. Uh, if it were the speed of a car, then uh, the car is called the plant. This is a funny name. Uh, for a car, but um, it, it comes from the early days of controls where uh, con the control theory was developed for industrial plants, for example, for a power plant. Uh, 
So uh, that part of the loop, this component, is called a plant. And uh, again, it's a funny thing to call a car a plant, but uh, uh, in, in controls jargon, that's what it is. So we're sensing the uh, speed of the car or the temperature of the industrial, of a boiler in an industrial plant or something like that. So the thing uh, whose uh, uh, variable we're sensing is the plant in the control loop. And that's the thing that we're actually controlling. Now we feed that value back and we compare that value with the a desired value. So we're getting what we uh, have and we're bringing it back through the sensor to this junction here and all this is is a summing block where we feed uh, the desired value in as a plus <clears throat> and the actual value in as a minus and we just take the difference between those two <clears throat> and that tells us uh, um, how they compare. If the control loop is doing uh, what we want it to do, then uh, these values will actually be equal and we'll wind up with a zero here. Okay, the next uh, item in the control loop is the controller itself. So the controller takes that comparison. This is the comparison, this uh, signal here, and it uh, sees uh, whether it's zero or non-zero and decides to take action. So the controller is the brains in the loop and uh, is taking this deviation between uh, what we want and what we have and then deciding to take some action based upon that. And then the last item in the control loop is called the actuator. <clears throat> the actuator is actually the mechanism by which the controller talks to the plant. That's one way of putting it. Or the controller influences the, the plant and changes the way the plant is so that the actual value uh, will move towards the desired value if they're not the same. If the actual value and the desired value are the same, then uh, basically the controller will see a zero here, and a zero means don't do anything, everything's okay. Uh, the controller will send a signal out, don't do anything actuator, the actuator will not do anything to the plant. So that's the way this loop works. <clears throat> this is called a feed forward part of the loop here. And this is called a feedback part of the loop here. This is called a comparator. I didn't uh, state that before, I don't think. But anyway, uh, that's the way that this is structured. And uh, every type of control loop with a single input and a single output basically has a structure. You have to have these um, five components uh, working together, as I've described, for the mechanism of the control loop to work. Uh, when you go and look at a control loop in, the, in industry or <clears throat> uh, uh, in a lab, <clears throat> uh, you need to have this picture clearly in your, in your mind, in my opinion, uh, to be able to identify the parts and pieces of the control loop. It's not obvious when you go uh, look at some uh, uh, control loop. You have a lot of pipes running here and there. You got wires. You have uh, tanks. You have sensors. You have all sorts of things uh, that kind of confuse things and they're not laid out in a pretty picture like this. So you need to take this pretty picture in your head, in my opinion, to the control loop that you're trying to um, analyze or put together to decide what uh, uh, component is doing uh, what function. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Well, one thing I would say about it uh, currently, though, is that nowadays many things are computer controlled. So it's real easy to uh, answer the question of where the controller is. The controller is in a computer or it's in a uh, programmable logic controller or, or uh, some type of electronic hardware that um, uh, is used to uh, perform the control function on the, on the plant. Okay, uh, now the other thing that's uh, interesting here too is we've gone from uh, the original overview system that I drew on the first slide to this current uh, slide here. And uh, uh, one moral of the story to see here is that even though you see a block like this, uh, overall block here for this control system, it can have details inside of it that you need to uh, analyze or put together or analyze to build a system. Uh, this type of structure actually is called block di block diagram. And uh, block diagrams are used throughout uh, control systems engineering, controls engineering. It's sort of the algebra of controls engineering to be able to draw block diagrams and manipulate them. More on that later also. This is just a starting video. 
Okay, uh, actually there's a, an accompanying book to this set of videos. The book was actually written first. Uh, it's available from uh, PolyX Engineering for $25 uh, plus shipping and handling. Uh, and you can order it by sending an email to me, Frank Owen, at polyxengineering.com. And that's the, that's the end of this uh, uh, video for now. Uh, uh, look for other videos uh, uh, following this series to get into more detail on uh, the practical aspects of control system engineering. Bye-bye.